All right, so for today, we're gonna to be going over the act of using a fluoride treatment, such as going through gels or foams and putting it in a tray and having that sit around the mouth for a while. But before we get started, as always, we're gonna need something to protect ourselves, so let's glove up. So let me try to get some from over here. Come on, and... Hey, what are you doing there? Oh, hello there. You just putting on the patient's bib, I see? You know you can customize that, right? Let's give it a tug. Awesome, that'll go for an adult. Hold on, what is he doing? All right, so starting with our different trays that we have here, of course we have different sizes depending on your patient that you're gonna be working on. We have those little kid sizes, and today hey, we're not gonna use that. Go over here a little bit to the more medium size. Eh, this doesn't seem like the one that we're gonna use, so out with that one. But this blue size. Once we go and fill our tray with our gels or our foams that we have, then we can go and flip it inside out so it can be inserted into the patient's mouth as so. And we can just go and lock this bottom tray and this top tray. With that, this is just about the style that you're gonna go and put it in their patient's mouth. Of course, there's gonna be this little gap right here, and this is gonna be important when we come to it later on what goes into that little gap. Right now, we have two different types of bottles. We're gonna have this fluoride gel that we can definitely use. It's fluoride foam, same thing, same nasty taste and everything. Strawberry, which kind of tastes like strawberry yogurt if it's been kind of expired for a good long time. So, and eh, so it's whatever floats your boat for the most part. Now, of course, if you have little irregular areas compared to others, you can give it a little bit more and such, but that's just about all you will need. But with our gel, we can go and place this, and you're not gonna wanna put too much, but just enough that it goes and fills that tray. And just like that, now we can see our two different methods versus our gel to our foam. What tends to be your preferred way when it comes to fluoride treatment on your patients? For myself, I tend to like the foam. It's a little bit easier to clean up, a little bit more to control than our gel. Just go and fold them together, link up this little piece right here so it holds its position, and you'll notice that there actually might be a risk of something, is that our materials may want to go and run out of our tray. But you're noticing that nothing's running out on this side. That's our foam. It tends to stay in, it tends to stay in the same spot and hold its position, where, not like our gel here, which will want to be really runny. Another preferred thing for our having foam versus gel. But apart from that, if you were to go and gel up both sides, you wanna get this into your patient's mouth fairly quickly. All right, so now that since we are over here with our patient just about ready to go, make sure to remember the sick bucket member is nearby and also ready to receive. We're gonna be ready to get our patient all fluorided up with our tray material. We're gonna go and make sure that we have our fluoride at the ready, give it a good shake, about like 15 seconds or so, but hold on, where's my tray? Do you happen to have it? Oh, it looks like it's uh, <laughs> right behind your ear, so let me just go and uh, get that. There you go. Now that I have it set up and it's going to be ready to receive all my fluoride foam and everything, we just remember to prep our patient. Hey, don't swallow. Make sure that you spit if anything's gonna be gathering in your mouth. You'll have that little suction. That'll protect you for the next minute or two while we go at this, okay? Awesome, high five? Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and get this started. So we go and get our fluoride foam and we go and give it a little bit of a squirt. Make sure to have your fluoride can at its vertical upside down angle as we go and fill our tray. And now that we got a good nice fill on the top and the bottom, now we can go ahead and get that ready to insert into our patient's mouth. With that, always make sure that you have your saliva ejector right nearby and raring to go. I'm gonna have you go and open up. And from there we have a couple techniques on being able to insert it. So with that, we can either go and pinch it and get this to go and collapse a little bit so that it makes it easier to insert into the patient's mouth, just like so. Or we may take it like a tray, like we take an impression, and pull one side of the cheek to our direction 
and go and rotate this in so that it can fit nice and proper. From here, our patient's gonna enjoy the next minute or two or so in for what it feels like is hell on earth, having all this flavorful stuff in their mouth and not be able to swallow it. So make your choices, get good flavors. Make sure that you get that saliva ejector squeezed in between those two trays so the patient doesn't swallow any of this stuff. It's all gonna taste like poison for the most part, so they have to sit with it until they are done. At the end, when it's time for removal, after that 60 seconds of bliss that's been going on, you're gonna go ahead and go and grab that tray with your paper towel that you have at hand, or you can use the patient's bib. Make sure to go and remove it from the mouth, catch that drool that's gonna come out with it, and take that saliva ejector, hand it back to your patient so that they can go and knock out all those different areas where the fluoride is tending to kind of stick around. Make sure that you can either give it to them or go ahead and do it to yourself. In case you actually end up getting one of these, which will happen to all of you, you might need to go and comfort and make sure that your patient knows that you're there for them as they're kind of singing into the plastic trash bin, as we would call it. Remember, there's always a key couple of things that you want to watch out for when they're doing this fluoride treatment. Make sure you're not swallowing the fluoride. Make sure that you're spitting it out into that saliva ejector. Uh, other things for like post-operative instructions would probably be uh, don't eat or drink for about 30 minutes. That includes hot or cold water or any beverages alike or anything. You doing all right? Don't worry, keep on singing into it. I'm here for you. So make sure that you always keep it ready. Either you're gonna have your mess bucket nearby or you're gonna have your HV nearby or anything. But in the end, I'm gonna be mopping this room no matter what, so kind of just sit there and enjoy the ride. There may be situations where you're not going to be able to use our typical trays because it just doesn't jive with your patient. So we may have to resort to other methods such as doing fluoride treatment, but on a standardized painting type of system. Now we have another type of system called varnish, which we'll be going over in another video, but we can just take our standard little foam or our different gel that we might have and go and put a little bit of that into our little dapping dish right here and paint it onto the teeth so that we still get that nice fluoride application with a little bit, uh, with one of our little cotton tip applicators that we have right here. Before you go and start applying that though, make sure that the teeth are as dry as possible. You can hit it with either a two by two gauze and give it a nice little gentle wipe, or you can go and hit it with our air water syringe to get a nice little breeze going on, get those nice and dry. But once they are nice and dry, kind of keep a little bit of isolation tools going on, such as go ahead and start packing cottons right in the anterior region, right where the gum tissue would be so that they don't touch the teeth and it keeps the tissues off of the fluoride. And once we have that, then we can go into application style where I'll go and just paint it onto the teeth. Now, same type of style, or you're still getting that same application. The only thing that you need to worry about with this is making sure that your patient still does not swallow it. So you're gonna not go and lather it on as much as you normally would with your other tray method. With this, you're gonna still have that perfect amount of time, that one to two minutes, depending on that manufacturer. And don't forget to get into those occlusal surfaces that we have on the posterior teeth. And just talk and distract your patient for that next little bit while this goes and does its awesome job. Once you get that kind of the majority wiped off, you can take your saliva ejector, hit those different little areas that we have going on. And don't forget that we don't leave little presents behind with them. Take those little cotton rolls out. Typically, since it coincides with people getting their teeth coronally polished, we pretty much just brush their teeth extra good for them. So they can probably skip tonight's brushings and wait till tomorrow to go and brush again. Make sure that they remember that they're gonna to need to wait a whole 30 minutes before they're gonna be able to eat or drink. And then you're gonna have some patients that are gonna ask you a really important question. Well, the spit in my mouth now tastes like nasty medicine, so can I not swallow anymore? So. So what do I do with it now? Do I just continue to spit it out? Well, absolutely. It's probably more encouraged for you to spit it out for the most part because there's gonna be leftover fluoride in your mucosa and with, mix in with your saliva. You're not gonna to want to swallow that because it's going to mess around with your stomach and it's gonna make you want to, um, to put it politely, make a mess probably on the ride home or when you get home. You're gonna have an upset stomach and you don't wanna to have to go through any acid or bile from your stomach lining, ruining the beautiful work that I just did of polishing and fluoride treating your teeth. 
So with every route that you go, maybe you go with the traditional style of going and using our trays, which might work for a certain level of people that can accept it, or you go with our fluoride varnish that has a little bit more acceptability in the younger ages. They're both good possible answers, especially when fluoride is such a good material for anyone of any age. Why not have multiple application ways of being able to apply it? Well, that's all for me. I'm the fluoride spy, and I'm out of here after I get released from here might be in a little bit of a sticky situation.